Hello and welcome to The Lost Art. I am Gar and I'm here with Paul. 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 Um, this Hel- is Helmet from the Nerdy Podcast. Yeah, Helmet from the Nerdy Podcast. <laughs> I've grown Gar. up now. Yeah, we're together. Together at last. We formed a tag team. Um, so we had this idea for this podcast ages ago. And basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to, uh, every couple of weeks we're going to do a podcast and we're going to pick X amount of songs and we're going to talk about those songs and why they are important either to the world or to us. And we are going to create a Spotify playlist to go with those songs. So you're going to have a podcast to listen to and then you're going to have a Spotify playlist attached to that podcast. The link to that will be in the text on any of the uh, social media posts or hopefully in the body of the actual feed for the podcast themselves. In the body. In the body. Straight to the fucking body, lad. So, we have recorded one episode already, but it was more of an introduction. Yeah. Um, this will be our first actual show with content. We now, think that we think they'll have themes to playlists. Yeah. This first one does anyway. Yeah, what's the theme for this one? Irish songs, what we like. Irish songs, what we like. What's songs that? from Ireland. Yeah. Whatever genre you want. Yeah, well, every year, and we also we, we we tried to stay away from like U two and yeah. Tin Lizzy and like the, the big well known bands. I mean, there's definitely some of the bands that we picked are definitely well known, but they're a little bit more kind of. At least the songs might be. Yeah, there's a couple of big hitters in mind, but the songs might not be as well known. Yeah, well, that's important. But I'll tell you what, you go first. Give me your first one. Give me your first song. The first one is your first song. By you your made first me band. the thief of your heart by Sinead O'Connor. All right, the one from In the Name of the Father. It's a name. Do you remember it's that? Father. No. It's deadly. It's a good. Yeah, it has Bono. Bono wrote it. Sort of Gavin really? Friday as well, I think. It's that conglomerate of lads. I wanted to pick a song that she wrote, but I also wanted to pick the best song the she song? sang. Yeah. <laughs> so you yeah. so got Prince and Bono. Yeah. yeah. No, it's fucking. It's an unbelievable song. It's off in the name of the father. So mm-hmm. it's uh, has the video directed by. Neil Sher- John Sher- what the, the fellow who directed that movie. Neil, Neil, Jordan. Neil Sheridan. Neil Jordan Sher- Sheridan. Whatever his name yeah. is. Yeah. I can't remember these things. Yeah. So it's, it's just a music podcast. It's just one not, of those things. Yeah. Not a film podcast. Not a film. We do, we do that on Tuesdays. Don't be judging on us. Yeah. So it's a deadly song. It has that big crescendo in the middle where all the fiddles and the things. You know, bands kick into a crescendo. It's normally mm. heavy guitar. Just kicks in with all the Irish instruments. It just sounds fucking great. My favourite song of hers isn't horse song either she's only a guest on it it's that uh, Ian Brown illegal attack song oh yeah that's just bananas it's not like Mass Attack no it's um, Ian Brown at all it's doing illegal, illegal attacks, attacks. attacks. Yeah. it is you're right yeah. sorry it's, it's bananas one. it's bananas special one. cases she does not Mass Attack yeah it's just outrageous the, 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 it's a great song the way the orchestra is laid out and the way everything everything kind of panned perfectly and I, I, I'd be honest with you I'm not a Stone Roses fan and I'm not an Ian Brown fan I don't dislike him yeah I just see that monotone yeah, uh, that kind of stuff doesn't do very much for me. They don't have to be belt and head with top speed, but that kind of, you know, like fucking arms longer than their knees, wearing yeah. Adidas shell suits, kind of. I think his debut album is better than anything the Stone Roses ever did. I yeah. love it. It's I, weird. I never got the, uh, the the absolute hero worship. I know with loads of these people, but Stone Roses. I don't get it. I think a lot of people like talking about Stone Roses because they were important at the time. Um. More than they were good. That might be a controversial opinion. Mm, they were just festively music for people at that time. It was perfect for them. Cans of fucking, like, dark berry cider or whatever. Yeah. In a field. They even had that then? I'm sure they did. Definitely Gar- had Alka Pops. Oh, remember all that. Fat frogs and all. Woodies. All that. Oh, Woodies. <laughs> I think the first drink I ever had in my life was a, a bottle of Woodies. The red one, I think. Oh, grimness. The mine, grimness. Mine was probably Dutch gold. I definitely was not listening to uh, the Stone Roses when I drank a can of Woody's or a bottle of Woody's. Most certainly not. What's your What's your first song? My first song is uh, a band I know next to nothing about. Absolutely next I'm gonna to nothing. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to grill you on. You should. Them. You should absolutely grill me on it. And it's a band called Stand. Yeah. And uh, I know of them, but yeah, I do not know much of their stuff. The, the first song um, of their debut album their debut album is called Correspondent and the first song is called Hang Me and uh, I heard it through a friend of mine a million years ago they had a CD of this uh, Irish band I didn't, I didn't even know they were Irish um, I just thought this was really kind of cool alt rocky kind of 90s jangly rock type of stuff yeah. and uh, incredibly well written it's real simple it's more of a it's, it's almost pop you know like there's there's not there's not a lot going on 
in there but for some reason it just resonated with me now I would sometimes simple that, is the best I would, you know what I mean exactly I mean put, potatoes <laughs> I would put dollars of downloads that there's better songs on the album but because that's the first one but this is I about heard, you this isn't yeah. about the best ones exactly because otherwise we'll have people going ah uh, you shouldn't have put that song on you shouldn't have put this song on like that's what you put on your we're, playlist we're also here to uh, take your input we will take your input yeah, and we, we might just, just won't listen to it like, we, we we'll might take listen it. to it we'll take the it. odd time we'll also be taking uh, maybe ideas for playlists absolutely if somebody has an idea for a cool a cool playlist or a cool uh, podcast that's worth talking about yeah, absolutely let us know um, but yeah Stan I know nothing about them I tried uh, the last couple of days when we came up with the theme for this podcast I went looking online for information <laughs> I know they started a, a new band. A couple of the guys started a new band. Um, after life, me. What was that called? Em- Empire Circus. All oh, right. Empire Circus named the new band, and they had their own music words. school somewhere in really? Dublin as well. Yeah, I think they moved to New York in the nineties, and they signed a big contract with I think Diageo to produce music for ads for Harp and Guinness and stuff like that in the states. Now I think they only broke up officially in two thousand and ten. Now this is me. This is me scouring the bottom of the barrel of the I'm internet. forgetting it and trying to remember it. <laughs> oh, could, and they put out a couple of albums. The only one I know is that correspondent album. I've never seen any of them anywhere else. I will most certainly go looking through Spotify and YouTube and wherever else I can find. Not iTunes anymore, thank God. That's dead. Yeah, um, what the fuck? Good. It was a bag of shite. Yeah, from, the, from the day it came out, it didn't make any sense. Did you ever open up by accident? Yeah, and it takes like an hour to open <sighs> It's that synchronizing libraries. Uh, it was an awful piece of shit. What do I do? Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to go looking for more stand stuff. But uh, yeah, hang me off the album correspondence. Um, it just reminds me of uh, a particular time in my life, and uh, I forgot about it until about four years ago when I was camping, and for some reason I was able to get 3G on my phone, and I don't know we were talking about Irish bands, and the name Stand came into my head. And I went looking for it and I found the album cover that I remembered and just put it on and listened to it on the side of the mountain. And that's how it popped back into my head yeah. after many, many years. So that's my first choice. And you feel a little bit patriotic. A little bit that. patriotic. Now, listen, no. the internet could let me down. These lads could be Welsh. But <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're Irish. Like I said, it's Is hard it stand to find. or stand? Just stand. Yeah. Just stand. I'm pretty sure they were Irish. I'm almost <laughs> gonna, so hopefully You fucked up this playlist no, already. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm 99.9% sure that they're, 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 they're dubs. And what's your, what's your second one? It is a Cranberry song, even okay. though Cranberries are also massive. It's Ridiculous Thoughts because I think it's the most underrated song with them. Yeah. It's an early song off No Need to Argue. Mm. And it has Elijah Wood in the video. Get the fuck. No, as a little kid. Frodo. Yeah, he's very young. Well, I'd say he's about 11 or 12, isn't he? He's running around. Could be early he's running around. They mm. could have got him over. I don't know. But either way, it's a super fucking underrated song. And it's really, uh, it's one of those haunting cranberry songs. Mm. A lot of the songs are haunting. Very but, much, yeah. But there's something about this one that I never hear it anywhere. So that I had almost forgotten about it after not listening to them for years. And is it kind of up-tempo or is it like no, a slower, kind of ballad type of thing? It's just one of those pushing along rock songs, mm. but it's it's all it sounds like it's in minor keys and stuff like that. And um I couldn't hit, couldn't remember for years when I stopped listening to them and I started listening to fucking like more mm. slayer and shit like that, you forget to listen to the cranberries. And it was about I'd say maybe five years ago, a hook from it popped into my head and I had to scour through all the albums to get this one. Because it's not I don't think ridiculous thoughts is but it is a big song because it's early but no one really remembers that. No one asked for that when we're DJing. Mm. Never that song. And it's uh, it's my favourite one and it's banger. Hmm. Dare. Well, it's on the playlist now for everybody to uh, appreciate, isn't yes, it? Yes, it will. What's your um, next I, one? Before, <laughs> they were talking about like, Frodo being in that in, her, mm. in the Cranberries video. I'm re-watching Oz at the moment. Jesus, it's a hard watch. That's again. grim as fuck. But I'm re-watching Oz. But <laughs> what's real fucked up is that, you know the way they do the flashbacks to like Prisoner number 84610 yeah. and they do the flashback that the crime they committed to get yeah. sent to Oz. Oh yeah, that was cool. <coughs> in one of them. It was a bit like uh, Six Feet Under except yeah, in prison. Yeah. They didn't die. But in every episode there was at least one or two of these flashbacks to some, some prisoner being sent um, being sent to uh, jail and the cr- crime they committed. And in one of them, and it must be one of his first ever roles, is Peter Dinklage being thrown off a building by a Latino gangster. Jesus. Yeah. And like there's no credit, no nothing. He's in it for like four seconds and that's it. It's just him being thrown off a building and this really crap kind of dwarf dummy like spinning through the air and then a shot of him lying on the ground covering fake blood 
So it just oh reminded me God. of that there. I forgot all about it. So my next choice um, is Cry Before Dawn. I had them on my list, so yeah. I, have to, I have to take them off because we, we were saying we didn't want to have the same band Double on it twice. Down. Yeah. So your Cry Before Dawn song was different to mine, but your yeah. one is... My, my Cry Before Dawn song is a Witness for the World. And... I think I'd know if I heard it, but it's one of those ones that won't come into my head now. Absolutely won't. Know it. I had Gone Forever because I'm mad basic. Yeah, Gone Forever, forever is a good song. It's, it's a banger. Yeah. It's not going to make it onto the list now. Let's put it this way. If you go on to, uh, you go on to Spotify, Gone Forever is number one, and I think Witness for the World is another, either th- two or three. Yeah. Let's put it that way, right? I, di- I didn't dig that deep. <laughs> like, I, I didn't get the Balrog of uh, a Cry Before Dawn songs. Uh, but Witness for the World is just perfect little pop, again, jingly jangly song. Perfect. One of those. Uh, nearly all my songs are very nostalgic because there's, there's something about, um, for me, growing up in the 80s, there was like this big, um, big kind of resurgence of, of Irish bands in like the late 80s and early 90s. Where yeah. Was, they were everywhere and they were all over the radio and everybody was you proud. Too. It has to be you two that got it going. Yeah. It has to be. Just to, just to hunt for it. People yeah. hunt out stuff. Well, it's just Ireland, the, it's not sure. It's not dirt anymore. <laughs> and um, the bombs are gone. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's something about a lot of these uh, the bands I picked and the songs I picked were uh, just could have would have been on radio and would have been songs that my father listened to or uncles listened to, you know, in the car was on the radio would have been torn up, that type of thing. So yeah, witness uh, witness to the world would cry before none. Um I actually have a copy I've copied that album on vinyl somewhere on. I think Is that the one with gone forever on it as well? I think it's on it as well, yeah. <coughs> I think so. They must only have a the Max, Max Tree albums. I think so, yeah. I don't, I don't know how long the, the, the lads lasted. I, don't, I think it's, they're it's, still it's, together now. I'd say so, but it's but, weird to hear a band like that from Wexford. It's not Wexford. weird. There's probably loads of them. Yeah, I don't. I doubt it. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. But they Wexford. are. Yeah, they are. Oh yeah, but it does but, make but sense. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you, like you just think you always think Dublin, the hub of all the alternative stuff. Not even just te- te- skill wise or or uh, quality wise. Just it's easier to get out there if you're there. But yeah, they're all from Wexford. But then again, Cranberries are from. Uh, but, but, but think about it this way, right? Like, when you say from Dublin, you don't necessarily mean the city, you mean the county, right? Yeah. But, like, Dublin City is such a big part of the county. And we're certain there's loads of buses and there's trains. And, like, even if you lived on the outskirts of the, the county of Dublin, like, it's still handy to get into town and, you know, get into studios and stuff like that. When you're talking about, like, Wexford, you're talking about, like, Wexford Town, you're talking about Cahar, you know, like, like, it's a big enough old county as well. Like, yeah. So, like, they these lads come out of and they're writing bangers yeah so did I, I don't I don't understand I'm not saying that like people from Wexford live in caves that's far from what I'm saying why did you like, say that then <laughs> <laughs> but no I, I, I always but when, when, especially of, of that era you know like Dublin wouldn't necessarily be in like a yeah. major we sound like such Dubliners now I can't believe cool shit comes out of a big field outside Dublin Every, everywhere <laughs> is better than Dublin let's be, it is. Let, let's be honest Dublin is a fucking is. hellhole but um, it's just even back then, like how did how did the bands like? It was incredibly difficult for bands from Dublin. That's what I'm saying. They weren't based in Dublin, so they weren't kicking off gigs yeah. easy. They had to drive back down to Barrett yeah. to do the gigs. Yeah, yeah, two and a half hours, probably less. Probably not fucking motorway back then. Proper motorway. So it would be national roads. Could have taken three, four fucking hours at that stage. Uh, like I don't, I don't understand. But yeah, that uh, Witness the World is a is a stone cold killer. Uh, like Gone Forever. Savage, but for some reason, witness yeah. the just kind of. Well, it's good ring, to not pick the obvious down. ones. I just thought picking Cry Before Dawn in general wasn't even a, a fucking obvious thing. Which Listen, is, so high five both of us. I got Cry Before Dawn and Tears for Fears mixed up as the same band. Jesus! For about 15 years. For real? Like, for real. I was going around telling people that uh, <laughs> Tears for Fears were from Wexford for <laughs> ages. Just two of them got mashed together in my head. Oh, uh, that, that makes no sense. I know what it makes sense. I know, but sometimes we can one, one little. Mishearing just of a something little, or a yeah, kid or just absolutely. or it could be a piece of artwork the same album Anything. and then you're set off for off. 10 years of yeah. getting that wrong yeah. and looking like an absolute sap I, I have a million of them have a million <laughs> that's the way my brain works as well. do you know what it is my brain rushes to join the solve, dots, like, solve yeah. puzzles and join the dots that it skips over massive differences mm. with things yeah so mm. that's uh, I still also have that brain wait what's your next one my next one is we don't need nobody else play whipping boy whipping boy yeah yeah, I was, I was thinking about We don't need nobody else. else. I was thinking about Whipping Boy. I was going to put trips on it, but I actually think overall We Don't Need Nobody Else is the one I want mm. on it. Yeah. It's weird. It's an alternative rock song, but also by the end of it, it could be 
sung in a stadium. Mm. An anthem, a football song, a sports song. We don't need-